Ta-da! Here we are. It's once again, Saturday morning, Final Cut TV and coffee. But you have to remember... Let me see, where is that? Mm -hmm. These are our sponsors for NAB. We'll be talking about them in a few minutes. But where is the... Huh. One second. Boy, I tell you, I switch up something. Screen share, Camly and Conqua. Let me put this over here. Here we go. This is the pre show. You're watching the pre show. And we are going to be talking all about Final Cut Pro and the possibility that there will be an update to NAB this year, before NAB. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Let me uh, get to my social media post. Now, the interesting thing is I had an error. I can't stream directly to X this morning. So you have to watch it on YouTube. Let me see. Group. Just hold on one second. Hold on one second. This is the pre-show. Pre-show. Before the actual show starts. That's what we're doing right now. I've made a few changes to my live stream, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. I think that is going to be it. Now, I'm not sure I got an error that it didn't stream to X. It's on Facebook, and it is on YouTube. Let me just double check. But for some reason, X, there's a problem with X. But that's okay. That's not that big a deal. That's just an interesting little side item. We're streaming on X on YouTube, but we're not streaming on X, the actual platform. Now, this is interesting. Let me see something here. Huh. Okay. I, I have it on I have it on ultra low latency this morning on YouTube, which is much quicker. Everything's a lot quicker. So that that's what I recommended. So that's what I did. So let me just check the audio here. Audio looks good. Looks good. Everything looks good. All righty. As usual, I'm going to give you a three minute countdown. This is the pre-show. You're tuned into the pre-show. I'm setting things up and adjusting a few things. So this is the pre-show, and we are going to start a three-minute countdown, and then we'll be right back, and you'll be the first. Your comments, Don Stafford, Yari, Alista, Sean, will be the first comments that we post in the actual show. All right, we'll be right back.
not the pre-show anymore. Let me turn that off. Where? There we go. Turn that off. No, this is the actual real show. Final Cut TV and Coffee. Let me, uh, there we go. Final Cut TV and Coffee every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. So let's do our comments in the, as they came in. First one came in from Mr. Don Stafford. Good morning, ready and waiting from North Carolina. And our good friend, Yari. Hi, Richard. Too bad I can't make the NAB this year. After all, must edit and teach. That's absolutely correct. But you could edit and teach ahead of time and still make it to NAB. Or edit and teach. Well, you can't teach from NAB, but you can edit. But I miss, miss you not coming there, Yari. Thank you very much. We already got four thumbs up. It's fantastic. Alista, good, mor good morning from Jamaica. Our friend Sean Beckner. What the heck is that? The live video has ended. No, it's not. I just got a warning that the live video had ended on Facebook, but it's not. It's still going on. It says live 10 minutes, 20 seconds. I don't know why it said that, but it did. Having problems connecting. Couldn't connect to X this morning. Sean Beckner says, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Rogerio says, good morning from Brazil. Absolutely. Marcus Moore, good morning from Brooklyn. Brooklyn, interesting place. Big Bot Studios, good morning. Coffee, good coffee from Toronto, Canada. You're still live. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, on my Facebook page, it says this video had ended. So, But anyway, I've changed a few things on my live stream. Okay, so th thank you very much. I already got five thumbs up. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. There's a thumbs up for you. I can trigger these. Hard well, I got a hardware, my stream deck. I can trigger them. Balloons. Confetti. I can trigger them without using hand signals. This is one of the advantages of using Ecamm Live. So, so I've changed a few things. Number one is I turned on low latency. Thank you very much. Thumbs up. Turned on low latency for YouTube. I don't think that affects the X platform, but it could be. Good Cecil, my friend, Cecil McKenna. Wow, first time you've turned in, Cecil. I haven't seen you for a while. Cecil was my woodworking friend from Washington, D.C. We used to work for a company called Columbia Woodworking, and he was my comrade from there. We did a lot of, a lot of jobs together. What camera are you using? I am using, for the live stream, I'm using a D... Um, a Lumix G4, but I have a Sigma art lens. I have a Sigma 18 to 35, the art lens, the really, really good lens. So that's why if you see I'm in focus, but my background is out of focus a little bit, just a touch. It's from that lens. Richard, do you connect your DJI mic and your X9 Pro to the iPhone via your Belkin hub? Yes, I do. Does it work, or must the mic be connected directly to your phone? Well, no, I connect the I connect the uh, the DJI mic too with the USB C little adapter that you plug into the phone because I can get two microphones that way. If I did USB, if I did Wi Fi, I mean uh, Bluetooth, I can only connect one microphone. So I always connect it with the hardware uh, adapter. On the phone unless I'm just doing one microphone then I connect via Bluetooth the DJI mic can connect Bluetooth I believe the mic too that is yes it does but you can only connect one mic if you use the receiver it's a very light little receiver I put it on the gimbal it doesn't really affect it connects right into the phone it's excellent I can get two microphones into it 
So I've set up a couple of different, couple different things this time. Seven thumbs up already. That's fantastic. RTV R. I hope you've been well. I have indeed been well. I have indeed been well. So. So the other thing that I've done, and I don't know if it's going to make a difference or not. Here's the deal. I got into discussion on Twitter yesterday, Twitter X, with a person who does iPhone. They do iPhone photography, videography, and he was saying Jack, Jack something. He was saying he always uses, never uses 24p, and I was using 24p all this time. But when I went back to look at my video, I downloaded the live stream videos from both YouTube and from Facebook, and they converted my 24p video to 30p. In other words, I sent 24p into Facebook and YouTube Live, but the video that they posted online was 30p, right? So now I switched over to 30p, so I don't have to do any kind of 24p to 30 conversion. I'm not sure. It always looked good. It, it looked good, so I didn't care about it. So now the GH4 has been set to, it's 29.97, not 30p. 29.97, I switched it over to NTSC 29.97. And Ecamm Live is outputting 1080p 29.97. And so there should be no conversion from 24p to 29.97 on this. So that's interesting that that's what was happening. I mean, that I never, once we got into this discussion, I said, let me just check and see what the heck's going on. Because... I presumed if I put 24p in, they'd spit out 24p, but that's not the case. Both YouTube, I didn't check X, both YouTube and Facebook both were doing 30p. So I switched everything over to 30p. Make it simple. So Tyler says, this is interesting. YouTube only converts when it is a live stream. That's interesting. So if I film in 24p, it'll stay 24p? Okay. That's interesting. So they don't do 29.97, only 30 frames per second. So don't use 23.98 or 24 when live streaming. Thank you for that information. I did not know that. But I since I got into this discussion, Photo Jack is the guy, I think. It, is that who it was? Let me check. Let me check over here on X, who I was having it back and forth with about 24p. He was saying that 24p is stuttery for him, and I'm saying I, I don't have any I don't have any issue. But Photo Jack, yeah, and he was saying that he was saying that he has problem with 24p, but I was saying. I almost always film with a gimbal. Far superior. It's far superior. Huh. The broadcast has ended on X. See, I don't know what happened with X, but I couldn't get on X this morning. It's okay. I put the YouTube link. So he was saying he's had stuttering and stuff with 24p on you shooting with the iPhone. No, I shoot with the iPhone all the time in 24p, but I use a gimbal. Gimbal is far superior. It's not far superior. It's certainly a much better way to stabilize versus holding by hand or even holding, even holding a cage. Because when a cage, you're still, it's not quite stabilized. They have a yeah built-in stabilization. I understand that. But I use a gimbal. 95% of the time. I only used a handheld when I just pulled out of my hand real quick, and then I shoot like this typically. I hold it like this. Catching a quick shot, yeah, it's not it's not on a gimbal. But if anything I'm planning, I'm shooting on a gimbal. I don't have any stuttering at all. Yeah, okay, so Tyler says, yes, if you film a 24 for a regular upload, it will stay 24. 
Okay, that's good to know because my stream is now 30p. I'm going to leave it at 30p. Do you experience any quality difference when using Bluetooth as connected connection on DJI compared to using it via USB apart from not being able to use the transfer at the same time? I've done tests. I've done tests with Bluetooth versus direct connection. There might be a slight difference, but the qual the Bluetooth quality is absolutely superb. It is very, very cool. Let me just check here, make sure we're doing okay. So I use Bluetooth sometimes. If I'm going out on a walk, um, and I take my phone, I don't really need the gimbal for that, so I might use my handheld. I don't use Bluetooth. If I'm hand-holding, I don't use Bluetooth. I don't use, I'm sorry, the USB receiver because it would stick out at the end. And Bluetooth is direct connect. Bluetooth is really, really good on the DJI mic too. It's very good. The quality, if there's a slight difference in quality, it sounds good. I really don't care. As a matter of fact, let me say this. I am amazed. I got my DJI Action 4 camera. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's a great camera. It really is a nice, compact little camera. And when I'm wearing it, when I go out for a walk sometime, I have a neck thing, just a really, like, a you know, magnetic that's sticking on so I can film when I want to. And when it's that close, it's like having a lapel mic. The microphone quality is, audio quality is superb. So I, when I'm doing that, or if, when I'm doing live at NAB, I'm going to have the, I'm going to be filming with three cameras most of the time. Front and back camera on my iPhone 15 Pro Max at the same time, two separate files, both in 4K, and I'm going to have the, the DJI Action 4 on the same setup, either handheld or on my monopod, and that is also shooting in 4K. But that microphone, when it's that close, the system, I think there's three mics, it sounds really good. The DJI Action 4 microphone itself sounds very good. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. We already got eight thumbs up this morning. That's fantastic. I appreciate it. Besides Final Cut Pro 10.7.2, what other releases do you hope to see at NAB? I go to NAB because I want Final Cut. I want to spread Final Cut Pro news and stream about Final Cut Pro news. So anything that's Final Cut Pro related, if a third-party vendor has a new plugin for Final Cut Pro, if they've updated their plugin for Final Cut Pro, if some other company is, has a new Final Cut Pro thingy or whatever, those are cool. What else? I'd like to see an update to the Blackmagic iPhone camera app. There's a couple of things I'd like to see there. A little more stability, perhaps, the ability to touch the focus and exposure reticles separately. That would be a nice thing to have in the DJI uh, iPhone camera app. Now, I expect, I'm kind of expecting Resolve 19, at least the beta version of Resolve 19, to come to NAB, but I'd also like to see the um, like I said, an update to their camera app for the iPhone. I love that. That app is the best. Now, here is the only thing. When I film at NAB, I'm shooting with three cameras, so I can't use the, the Blackmagic camera app because it's going to shoot to one camera. So I use the Rode, what is it called? The Rode what? The Rode app that can shoot the three cameras at once. Let me see what it's called. Road Capture. The Road Capture app can shoot to two or three different, two different cameras at the same time. I used to use the DJI. I used to use the, I used to use the Filmic Double Take, but I don't use that anymore. It messed up when I was using it at the Creative Summit and it crashed and I lost that interview. 
24th, my favorite frame rate works for movies, works for me, absolutely. If I'm doing a if I'm doing a, a movie kind of a thing, more filming, I'll use 24 typically, but when I'm live streaming, which I do a lot of, I'm going to stick to 20 to 30, 29, 9, 7, 30. The DJI mic is meant to be versatile for any camera, any phone, which gives you all different options. It's it's a really, look, I had the DJI mic one and I loved it. I had the Rode Wireless Go 1, sold it. I got the Rode Wireless Go 2 and sold the one. I got the Rode Wireless Go 2. I got three different mics, including a white one. Used it for a year or two. When the DJI mic system came out, I bought the DJI mic one, sold my all my Rode well, microphones. And it's not because of the quality. The quality is fine. It's because they're too big and clunky. It's like a big square. When they did the Rode Wireless Go Pro, they didn't reduce the size of the transmitters. It's too bad. It's just too clunky. The, the case, they didn't have a case for years. The DJI came out with a charging case two or three years ago, and then Rode kind of copied it this time, but they still have two separate pouches that you have to have instead of one consolidated pouch. Gimbals have been so popular, but I can never rely on them for documentary work. Steadicam is, oh yeah, Steadicam, of course. Yeah, Steadicam is, is, is but that's a separate, that's a separate field. A Steadicam operator is a separate field. That's a whole different ball game. No, of course. But for me, when I'm walking, look, I'll be walking all over NAB in the convention center, inside, outside, going to different events. I like to have a gimbal. It's very lightweight. It's very good. Balances well. And I have a combination of holding it in my hand and a combination when my hands get tired, I put it on my monopod so I don't have to hold it the entire time. But I'm not bringing a steady cam to NEB, but I understand that. By the way, the MetaQuest 3 place spatial video recorded on iPhone 15 Pro. Very, very cool. Sean Beckner it also has a backup recording on the transmitters. I love that. I My DJI Mic 2 records in 32-bit float. Period. The difference between recording in 24-bit and 32-bit float, 24-bit, it records 14 hours. 32-bit float, it records 11 point something hours. It just stays on 32-bit float, period. Just leave it there. Richard, do you ever use a lavalier, lavalier with the transmitters trying to understand the purpose of using one? I've got a new lavalier coming. I test them out, okay? I didn't test the DJI one, but I tested it out. Um, which one did I test that? I tested out one. And it, here's a couple of things. The, the mics that I used with the DJI system have to be right angle. Have to plug in right angle. Because instead of a screw on, like professional um, <clears throat> transmitters have, it just plugs straight in, but that they have a way to wire the cable behind the mic clip. They got a special place back there for the mic cable. So it loops around, goes in the mic cable clip, and you can't pull it out. But it's got to be, for me, it's got to be a right angle. Hollyland. The Hollyland lapel mic is only 29 bucks versus the DJI lapel mic, which is 39 bucks. So that's what I use when I want to use a lapel. If you're talking about the difference in quality, it's negligible with the Hollyland. Sounds a little different. It might sound a little better, but I'm not convinced versus just the built-in microphone. Do you need one? No, you don't need one. If a gimbal doesn't work for you, using Gyroflow and a compatible camera is also a good option. Yeah, so all the cameras have built-in stabilization and stuff. There's stabilization in Final Cut Pro. None of them are as good as a gimbal. They're not as good as a gimbal. Having that fluid motion, turning left and right and stuff, and when you're walking, it's, it's, 
it's a it's a physical mechanical um, stabilization. It's superior to the iPhone stabilization. It's superior to the GoPro. The GoPro is pretty darn good. Not the GoPro. I don't have a GoPro anymore. The DJI Action 4 stays Rocksteady, Rocksteady Plus, and Horizon Balance. And they're pretty darn good. I went out for a walk yesterday and tested all three. I, I What I have is a device that goes around my neck, and then I put the camera. It's magnetically attached. And I tried all three, and they're pretty darn good. The stabilization is very, very good. Can Road Capture use two of the rear cameras at the same time? When I open it, I get the front one and the rear one, but sometimes I'd like to use two rears and the other apps I found record 1080p. I don't know if it can record two rear cameras. Now, here's the thing. There's an app that can record three cameras from the iPhone at the same time. I forget which app it is, but you can record three distinct files. Now, it might be 1080p. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Fantastic. We got 11 thumbs up already. I like, first off, I said, Filmic, Filmic Pro app, double take, I used it for years. First off, it's 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 typically, it's very clunky to set your cameras. You got to go in different menus and switch this and switch that and check, check this. The Rode Connect automatically chooses the front and back camera. I don't know to be honest with you, if you can choose two rear cameras, I don't know. I, I don't do that, but I probably think you can. I don't know why you couldn't. I, don't, I wouldn't know why you couldn't, but I th typically think you could. So we're going to talk about NAB, and we still have, we still have, a few more weeks for the Final Cut Pro team to get us for the Final Cut Pro team to get us Final Cut Pro 10.7.2. So the question is now here's what happened this week. Alexandra says, let me give you a thumbs up. Fantastic. Thank you very much. They came out this week and said, the pundits, the people that watch this stuff, there's not going to be an iPad Pro announcement in March. Well, apparently they're correct because it's March the 30th and there was no iPad Pro. They're saying it's coming at the beginning of May. Now, the beginning of May is two weeks after NAB. So originally I thought that there would be an announcement of a new version of Final Cut. Thank you very much. 13 thumbs up. Originally, I thought there'd be an announcement with the new iPad Pro of a new Final Cut for iPad and therefore a new version of Final Cut for the Mac. This is my original thinking. Now that they've pushed the iPad Pro release announcement till beginning of May, I don't know what's going to happen with Final Cut Pro 10.7.2. Now, I, I still have faith that they can release the Mac version before NAB. Like I said in the last couple of weeks, I am not confident that's going to happen, but I would like and hope that the Final Cut Pro team can get us an update prior to NAB. Now, here's the reason. It'll create buzz about Final Cut Pro at NAB. Okay, it'll create buzz because otherwise there's no buzz happening. There's no buzz happening. I don't know what happened with X this morning. It wouldn't log in for some reason. I may have to delete it and try it again. I don't want to mess with it now because it could stop the stream. You know what I mean? And I don't want to mess with that. So, so here's the thing. It's been four months since we had a feature update to Final Cut Pro. I'd like to see at least three feature updates per year. So every four months, I'd like to see a feature update. Holly Lamb was the first to introduce a chargeable base for the transmitters. Their new M2 mics are dope. 
you mean those little tiny button mics, Yari? The only thing I don't like about if you're that's what you're talking about, about the little button mics, that you can't record audio to them. It's just a microphone and a transmitter. I have to record backup audio, which is my on my DJI mic two and also the Rode Wireless Goes. You can record internally to the transmitter as a backup. So if there's any problem with transmission from you to the camera, you still have a direct source of audio. If the if the new let me look it up, but the all the Hollyland Hollyland two. Let's see what comes up. Yeah, the Hollyland Lark Wireless Two. They don't. They don't record in the mics. There's no backup recording. So, therefore, I wouldn't use those. I don't want just the recording to go into the microphone or the camera. Let me pull this up. Hold on one second. We'll show you what we're talking about here. This is the Hollyland Mic 2. These little tiny buttons of microphones, they look very, very cool, but you can't, they don't record internally. These two, they don't record inside like the, like the DJI Mic 2 does in the, what you call it. So that's the reason I wouldn't use them. For a budget, yes, they really look really cool, and I'm sure they're good quality. And they're tiny, they're very tiny compared to the Rode Wireless Go, the Rode Wireless Go. Three to Pro especially, but also the DJI Mic 2 is much smaller. It's much, much smaller, and I can record 32-bit. So that's what I prefer. Let me just look down here right now. So one thing I want to talk about, of course, is NAB. One of the things that's important to me, I go to NAB, right? Yes, I go to NAB. How do I go to NAB? With sponsors. Sponsors. I get sponsored for NAB. So we have, of course, we have Hedge. You guys all know Hedge. FMC. FMC. LumaTouch. LumaTouch, my friends over there. LumaFusion, which I use all the time, especially at NAB. And our friend, Roger Bolton from Cormel. They're sponsoring my trip to NAB. They will be sponsors the, for the, all the live streams there. I'm just showing them ahead of time right now, two weeks ahead of time, and I'll also be sh talking about their products after NAB, but they'll be sponsoring my trip to NAB. Please, please, let's give a round of applause to the sponsors. Hedge, FMC, LumaTouch, LumaFusion, and Cormelt. Roger, our friend Roger Bolton over there from Cormelt. We'll be interviewing all of them. Not FMC because I'll be streaming their content creators event on Sunday night from NAB. But I'll be interviewing Hedge, LumaTouch, and we'll have something from Roger. I'm not sure yet if Roger's going to be there, but even though if he's not going to be there, he's still sponsored Final Cut TV at NEB. So that's very, very cool. Canva just bought Serif, makers of Finney. I saw that. We'll bring them to the Fresh Office Fair and Pro Serif users. Canva has a Pro 2 online video editor. Is the NLE war becoming bigger? Yes. That's a good point, Ruggiero. The NLE wars, if you if you want to call them wars, speaking of wars, I just, I've watched two movies in the last two weeks that are highly rated movies. So at first I watched Killers of the, Killers of the Flower, the Moon Flower, whatever it was, was, Scorsese, and I would say that that that, that was a good movie, but it wasn't uh, like an A plus movie in my opinion. 
It was good. It was good. De Niro was acting like himself in that movie. A character and some of the other actors and actresses, they were all good. But last night I watched Oppenheimer. Big thumbs up for Oppenheimer. It was an excellent three hours long movie. It told me a lot of things I didn't know during that time, World War II, the end of World War II. I didn't know some of those things. So that was that's an excellent movie. If you like, if you want to, you know, watch a, a semi-historical movie about the war and how it ended and the people that were involved. So Oppenheimer was very well acted and everything and very well written and very well filmed. But the NLE wars, let's call it competition. Because the, in the war, it seems like somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. And that's not really the case with NLEs, is it? I mean, I've, I've said this multiple times, you can use one more than one NLE. As Sean Beckner says, Oppenheimer was incredible. See, I didn't know about Oppenheimer until I watched the movie. Then I started reading about him. I mean, I knew about Einstein, of course. I didn't know about Oppenheimer. It was an incredible movie. It got a lot of won a lot of awards this year, whatever they were, Oscars, whatever, and I can see why. It was filmed beautifully. The acting was really good. It brought you right into the time that this was happening. The lead actor was good. The the other actors and actresses were good. It was it was just very, very entertaining for you know, for a war type movie. So it just taught me things I didn't know. I didn't know about Oppenheimer until I watched the movie. And now I'm going back and reading books about him and stuff. So he died in 1967. Six, no, 67, 87. I forget which. 87, I think, not 67. Hey, um, I'm, I'm live on the air right now. I'm live on the air. You? No, I no, I of course I won't say what this is. I, I won't say who this is, not what this is. You have some news about the Final Cut Pro update? I won't say who this is. I won't. I never say who it is. So tell me what's going on with Final Cut Pro 10.7.2. Is it going to be coming out before NAB? Around NAB? Really? Well, remember in 2022, you in March, you had you allowed YouTubers to show a beta version of Final Cut Pro. Do you remember that? That was a mistake. It wasn't supposed to happen. Well, it did happen. And then you released it right before NAB, like a couple days before, in middle of April. You also released ProRes RAW at NAB. Do you remember that? Yeah, you did. It was NAB Monday, I remember. You had an update to Final Cut Pro. They had ProRes RAW. So you have released Final Cut Pro updates around NAB. Absolutely. 
So 1072, what's the deal? It's coming. It's going to have features. It's going to have feature. It's going to be a feature update. You know, last year you released three, bu three bug fix updates in a row, but they were very, very quick. They were very quick. So the last update we had was 107.7.1. It came out in December the 19th, right before Christmas holidays. But we haven't had a feature update since November the 30th when you released 10.7 at the Creative Summit. So it's been four months between feature updates. So you're saying what exactly? 10.7.2. Really? Really? 10.7.2. So that's really good news. I won't, I won't tell anybody. Don't worry. Nobody's listening to us right now. Yeah, we're live streaming, but nobody's listening. Okay, so fantastic news, 10.7.2. I appreciate you calling in. I won't say who it is. I'd never say who it is. All right. Thank you for calling in. Call in anytime you want. Uh, that's good. That's great. 10.7.2. Okay, Tim. I'll talk to you later. Ten point seven point two. We got some news about it, but I can't tell you what it is exactly. So we'll find out here shortly. Oh, I still think it can come out before NAB. I'm going to go over there and post something on Facebook to see if the comment comes through. Because I think all these comments, let me just see. See if it comes through. See, I have to go back to my main page, I think. Yeah, there we go. Well, actually, we did get a comment from, yeah, there we go. Facebook comments are coming through. Very, very cool. Very cool. Now, next, let me look up something because we're going to have a live stream next week. But I don't know about the week after because where is my where are my notes? There they are. Let me look up here. Let me look up here. Yeah, so we had some excitement in Baltimore last week. I'm sure you all know that. We had the, uh, a bridge in the harbor was knocked down. Boy, that was shocking. Let me tell you, that was very, very shocking. I don't know what they're going to do. Put it back up. I don't know what they're going to do exactly. It's going to take a long time for them to build it back up because it's over water and it's a bridge and they got to design it. They got to, got to award it and all that stuff. So what am I looking for? Floor maps. So one of the things this time at NAB is there's no central hall. The central lobby is open, but not central hall. Let me see here. I'm looking for my I'm looking for my schedule. Here we go. So let me see. I part there. Let's see, let me count backwards. So I'm gonna get next week we'll have the normal Final Cut TV and coffee. 
we're going to get the following week I'll be headed to Las Vegas so I'll do a Final Cut TV and coffee from the airport the airport it won't be in this studio and it won't be this microphone it won't be this camera I'll just use a MacBook Pro or my iPhone or but we'll do a short Final Cut TV and coffee that Saturday before I actually fly to NAB now, let me just check on something. Yeah, I think we can do that. I think I'll be there. It might be 11. Let me see. It might be 11 o'clock. Or else I can do one here before we go, before I go live. Maybe I'll do that. Before I fly, I mean. So what are you expecting? 10.7.2, thank you very much for the thumbs up. 14 thumbs up already. What are you expecting in 1072? It would be a disappointment if it was a bug fix only. Could it be? Yes. It could be. But I don't think so. I think they've been, it's been a long time, three months since the last bug fix, four months since the last feature update. So I think 10.7.2 is going to have some features, at least a couple features in it. Now, let me go over here. Do, 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 do. Let me go over here. FCP at NAB. I go to I go to NAB to look for anything Final Cut Pro related. So. We have this group, Final Cut Pro at NEB. We're live on there right now, but here's what we have. Look, we have this. We have a list of free events. These are free events, locations, times, and places, locations, times, and days of free events that you can go to at NAB. So go over there FCP at NAB on the Facebook platform. It's a small group. That's what it's intended to be. It's not supposed to be thousands of people because thousands of people are not going to NAB. So, but we have an ongoing list here of different things that are free to attend. So the idea is at a free event, we can have our own little sub-meet, right? So there's no reason why we can't. They're free. You can get in. You have to register for some and not others. Some some of you just need your badge. But no matter what the subject matter is, we can have our own little sub-meet at these free events. Get a table, stand around, talk to each other. So that's why I'm posting those different groups up there. There's different... Uh, lists up there. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. 15 thumbs up already is fantastic. This is what I'm saying. 16. Thank you very much. 16 thumbs up. So yeah, we have sponsors. Final Cut TV has sponsors. Hedge, FMC, LumaTouch, LumaFusion, and CoreMelt, right? They are sponsoring Final Cut TV to go to NAB. You're familiar with these people. I talk about them all the time. I've had Roger on, I've had Hedge on, FMC, and LumaTouch, Terry and Chris from LumaTouch. I'll be interviewing Hedge, LumaTouch, and um, Roger's not sure if he's going yet, but he's still sponsored us. So that's very, very cool. However, I'm counting on you to be buying me coffees over there while I'm there. Listeners to watch this show, buymeacoffee.com slash Richard Taylor. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Got another thumbs up. Very, very cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Buymeacoffee.com, Richard Taylor. You can buy me a coffee. They're like five bucks a piece. Coffee, hamburgers, french fries, say hello, whatever you like to do. Buymeacoffee.com, Richard Taylor. That's where all the listeners can 
support me while I'm at NEB. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe over there at YouTube. It is appreciated. It is appreciated. The place where you subscribe is youtube.com. Richard T. You know what? This is interesting. Here's, here's how you do this. Now, let me uh, edit the text because I was kind of, it was kind of interesting. Just put an at. Put an at in front of my, my name and it comes right up. This is, all the social media is doing this now, it seems like. All social media. So we're going to do this. Turn that off. So do you think there's going to be a Final Cut Pro update? I'm hoping. Now here's the deal. Contrary to what people have been saying, including myself for, the, for years now, the most common day of the week for a Final Cut Pro update is not Tuesday. It is not Tuesday. I went back through the list and checked every time there was an update. Thursday is by far the most common day for a Final Cut Pro update. Monday it's happened a few times. Tuesday it's happened about half some of the time. I don't think ever on a Friday or Saturday, one or two times on a Sunday. Thursday is twice as many updates as Tuesday. Twice as many. I didn't know that till I went back and checked. We got our comment from our friend Ben Bowser. Balzer. Good morning, Richard. Ben, I, I let me see something here. Louisiana, I think he's from. Huh. Very, very interesting. So, glad you could join us, Ben. 17 thumbs up. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Ben says, Southeast Louisiana, the swamps. Wow. I think I've driven through Louisiana, but I've never actually, I don't think I, maybe I did stop there. Maybe I did stay in a hotel one time. Glad you could make it. So here's the deal. Do I know for a fact that 10.7.2 is coming out? No, I don't. Absolutely not. I hope it's coming out, and I hope it's out before NAB. If it's out before NAB, it creates a buzz, a Final Cut Pro buzz at NAB, which is why don't why wouldn't you just why wouldn't you just use that? It's, it's free money laying on the table. You're going to put the update out anyway. Put it out so you have some buzz at NAB. Last year there was no buzz. I just bought the books series called Timeline from John Buck. John tells the incredible story behind the video edit since to AI era. Worth it. Very, very cool. I'm not familiar with that book. Our other friend has a new Final Cut Pro book, and I think our friend Ian Anderson from Australia is updating his for 10.7. We will have to see how that goes. But I'm expecting, my point was, I guess, if there's going to be an update for Final Cut Pro, we have two more Thursdays and two more Tuesdays. Next week and the following week. For them to release it. Predictions on the Affinity Suite now that Canva bought them. One of the good things about that let me just pull that up here. One of the good things about that is that Affinity has come out and said, you're going to still be able to buy a perpetual license. They've promised that. 
So let's go over here real quick. We'll pull this up. Fair pricing. Perpetual licenses will always be offered and we will always price Affinity fairly and affordably. That's the main thing for me. Perpetual licenses will always be available. They're giving you an option and they also have these things other pledges to the community. So you don't have to worry about them going the way of Filmic Pro, for example. You don't have to worry about that. That's the main thing. They give you an option. Ben says, great news. Yeah, it was. It came out within one or two days of them making that announcement. I have a side gig that requires me to use Canva a lot. Love it. Will be interesting. Yes. I don't know Canva. I don't even, I'm not even sure what that is, but I am familiar with, I am familiar with Affinity. I have Affinity as well as, what's the other one I have? I have the other, the other one too for graphics. What is it called? Uh, Pixelmator Pro. I have that. I use that all the time. But anyway, I'm expecting, I'm not expecting, I'm hoping 10.7.2 comes out before NAB. If it does, it creates buzz for Final Cut Pro at a very important event, National Association of Broadcasters. Last year, they reported 65,000 attendees, something like that, attendees, I don't know if that, I don't know what that means, they, they did a recap and that's what they said, 65,000, now that's down from 90 some thousand from 2019, but still, it's, it was 10 or 15,000 more 2023 was 10 or 15,000 more than 2022. I'm expecting the same kind of update. I expect another increase, maybe to 70,000, 75,000 this year. They've already got more sponsors this year than they had last year. So Canva is the best graphic design shortcut ever. Affinity or Pixelmator. I have Pixelmator, but does Anyone prefer Affinity? I've heard a lot of great things about Affinity. I have both. Canva bought Affinity, right. Right, I'm not sure what Canva does. I know what Affinity does somewhat. I have Affinity and I have Pixelmator Pro. I have both, but I don't know what Canva does. I have no idea what Canva does. I just, I use it to make graphics for these live streams, for example. This graphic I made in Pixelmator. I make all my graphics in Pixelmator. So, add to broadcast. Absolutely. Ben says he uses both. I use I use Pixelmator because I'm more familiar with it. One of the very cool things with Pixelmator is, thank you for the thumbs up. One of the very cool things with Pixelmator is you can make LUTs that you can use in Final Cut Pro. Did you know that? Canva is a mega size library, okay, of graphic designs you can customize, simple as that. Now I understand, well, it's like a big library of graphic designs that you can customize, that's very cool. That's very cool. So, back to 10, Final Cut Pro 10.7.2, no idea what they're going to put in that if they release it before NAB. But we have four more. We have 
two Tuesdays and two Thursdays before NAB. My bet, since they're not, unless they release the iPad and those people are wrong, they said beginning of May, they said the beginning of May for the new iPad Pro, which is weeks after NAB, unless they have to wait for that before they release a new version of Final Cut, that would just, like I said, it's like you have free money on the table to get buzzed at NAB because last year was really dead for Final Cut Pro News. There was no Final Cut Pro News last year. I color grade in Pixelmator Pro more and more. Very cool. Absolutely. Let's go over there and see if there's any, what's going on over at X. As far as Final Cut goes. Interesting. So somebody brought up earlier the, the, the NLE wars. I don't think they're wars. I think it's just competition. Because in a war, usually somebody wins and somebody loses. It's just competition, and competition is good. I mean, cap cut. LumaFusion, of course, is a big competitor. Avid, Premiere, Final Cut, Resolve is a giant one. I expect, like I said, I expect Resolve 19 at least the beta to be shown at NAB. Blackmagic has the biggest, by far, presence at NAB. They have a gigantic, gigantic presence at NAB. So, I'm still here. I'm just going to look a movie, Apple and Sonic Pro. So here's what happened in 2019. People say that, you know, that they haven't been to NAB. This is Apple, member of the Fonica Pro team, on stage at NAB in 2019. I'm Colleen Penderast. I actually run the design team for Pro Video, so that's Final Cut, Motion, and Compressor. And like many of you, I've been coming to NAB and this event watching Michael talk for a long time because I was an independent editor prior to joining Apple about 15 years ago. So that is Colleen Pendergrass. Let me see what else we have. That was 2018. Uh, let me get another one here. I mentioned this, the content creators party. This is the content creators party that Future Media Concepts had. This was last year. I mean, last year, 2023. There's a lot of people there. I mean, a lot of people. But it's not free. It's free if you get one of their courses, but it's not free otherwise. I think tickets are like 75 bucks. So it's, everything in Vegas is expensive. But you can see how many people showed up. They have a lot, a lot of courses. Mostly Adobe, I think. Adobe Project stuff. After Effects, Premiere. Jeff Greenberg is there. I remember he was there. I saw him. A lot of people. Last year, Philip Hodges was there. Gregory Clark was there. Uh, like I said, Jeff Greenberg was there. I think Photo Joseph is usually there. A lot of people are there. So I'll be going to that because they are one of my sponsors to go to NAB, Future Media Con Conferences. So... These are my sponsors, Hedge, FMC, LumaTouch, LumaFusion, and our friend Roger Bolton from over there at Cormelts. 
they are sponsoring me to go to NAB. And I appreciate each and every one of them. Absolutely. I've kind of got a routine when I go to NAB. I know where I can get food. I have to walk from my hotel. I mean food for the hotel room. Where I'm staying, there's a there's plenty of restaurants. There's some in the actual hotel. There's plenty of restaurants right outside. There's an In-N-Out burger right there. And my favorite place to go for breakfast is a place called Maxie's. They have really, really good Americana breakfasts. So I really look forward to that. Usually I only eat one or two meals a day. I don't go, th I don't eat, usually eat three, but when I'm doing so much walking, I might be eating a little more while I'm at NAB. But I have the routine down. I check into the hotel, get rid of my stuff, organize things, maybe fire up a live stream before, I'll, I'll do a live stream Sunday night, no, Saturday night, before I, I'll do a live stream Saturday night before I actually go to the convention center, to the NAB convention center. I'll do a live stream Saturday night. There is an event Saturday night. I might go to that, depending on how tired I am. I So what I've done in the past, I've, I've made a mistake. NAB starts Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. I used to get a plane that dropped me in to Las Vegas, 830 which means I could get from the airport to my hotel, drop my main bags off, pack up a small contingent of things to put in my backpack, my cameras, my monopod, microphones, water, stuff like that, and then go to NAB at 10 o'clock when it opened up. So, what I didn't realize until I went to until I went to the Creative Summit last year, I'm worn out. I got to spend two hours in the airport on this end, a five-hour flight, another half hour or so getting back to my hotel, and then I start going to NAB. So that's like that's a whole day of work just getting to Las Vegas, and then I would start going filming at NAB. No. I made that mistake too many times. Now I'm getting it on Saturday, getting a good night's sleep, and then starting at NAB first thing in the morning. So. Very nice comment. You are an amazing creator. I think your channel is so underrated. It's it's okay. I have all your all these friends, all these watchers and viewers. I really appreciate it. It is appreciated. Thank you. That was very nice of you to say. I have... YouTube sent me notice. YouTube sent me notice that I'm approaching half a million views on my YouTube channel. My top video is about 30,000, I think. Tutorials do really good, especially if they're short and to the point. I have a tutorial series called One More Thing, and I try to be concise instead of blathering on like some of these people do, talking about subjects that I just don't care about. They get they take 10 minutes to get to the point. I try to get right to the point and then get right off again. That's what I try to do. I have a series called One More Thing, concise little video. By concise, I mean three minutes average maybe four minutes, but I try to put as much information as quickly as possible in there. So the tutorials do a lot of, they do really high numbers. NAB is a lot of walking every day. Man, I remember so much walking nonstop all day and wearing out. So much walking, yes. So the mistake I made, Ben, up until this year, this year I booked, on, I'm coming in Saturday. NAB starts 10 o'clock Sunday morning, so I'll, be, I'll spend the night in a hotel. I get there Sunday morning before NAB started, and I'm already, I've already spent eight hours 
airplanes, airports, walking, getting Ubers, getting to the hotel and unpacking. I've already spent a whole day of activity before I started NAB, so I was already tired. I guess that's my point. Not this time. I'm coming in Saturday. Saturday afternoon, and then I'll... There's one event Saturday night I might go to, depending how tired I am, but I'll fire up a live stream for sure. Got to get badges and all that stuff. It's a lot of walking. I don't know why, but the maps for NAB, it's much... It's multiplied times 10. It's much much bigger than you think, the distance between things. It's walking, 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 walking. So I travel very light. I'm not bringing my Lumix S5 Mark IIx. That stays home. I don't need it. I'm bringing my iPhone camera and my DJI Action 4 cameras, a monopod that can stand by itself, but I can also carry it without too much weight. My Insta360 Flow Gimbal, which is my favorite gimbal for the iPhone. Various microphones and things. I am going to be doing some formal interviews. My sponsors, I'll be interviewing Hedge. I'll be interviewing Luma, Luma Touch about their latest products. I'm not going to be interviewing FMC, but I will be live streaming and filming their content creators party on Sunday night. And our friend Roger from Cornmelt, we're going to try to get him on him in on one of the live streams. I'm not sure if he's coming to the NAB or not. We don't know yet. But if he doesn't make it, because it's a lot of long trip for them, we'll still get him on one of the live streams. But it is a lot of walking. It's walking, walking, walking. So, so water, comfortable shoes, good walking shoes. I put the insoles in there on top of the good walking shoes when I go, just for extra cushion. Oops, I hit my microphone. Hit my microphone. There it is. This is a Neumann TLM 103 going through an Apollo Twin X, my audio interface. What the heck am I sitting on over here? Oh, something. A mic clip. I hit my Apollo Twin X and it was rocking. It's not supposed to be rocking. So anyway, if you're not coming to NAB, I will be providing a window into NAB for you, a live window. I'm going to try to do multiple short five to 10 minute live streams during the, each day. But I'll be filming more than that because I have, I'm going to be filming in three cameras front and back camera on my iPhone, and the Action 4. All the cameras will be 4K. I'll film in log on the Action 4. I can't film in log on the iPhone 15 Pro Max when I'm shooting with two cameras. Can't do that. So I'll have three, four, three 4K files to deal with, with a lot of my shooting. It'll be interesting. I got to go back and organize that. I am taking my, I'm bringing two of these crucial X9 Pro hard drives to dump stuff on. They'll be, they'll both have the same thing. They'll be duplicating. I have, these are four terabyte, the same size as my MacBook Pro, and I'll be duplicating all the footage that I shoot each day on two of these. These are fantastic little teeny drives. So far, so far they are. Creative Studio says Pixelmator Pro, best photo editing software. Yeah, I use it. I use it. I use it for graphics too. I create graphics with it. So here's what I ex here's what I ex expect. So it's interesting. I can see that the comment pop up on YouTube before it pops up over here. I use Pixelmator Pro for quick photo touch-ups and graphics. If I need to do more complex graphics work, I'll use Affinity Design. I'm not familiar with Affinity Photo. Great, great GUIs. Yeah, I, I think guess I have Affinity Photo. I don't have Affinity Design. So, 
Very, very cool. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. For some reason, we're not getting... Some reason we're not getting Facebook. Let me just go over here real quick. I don't see. I don't see that. Anyway. Affinity photo selection tool, not good. I don't know about that. As a Logic user, do your MacBook Pro does everything you need it to do when using Logic? Apparently Logic is better at using the extra horsepower of the M3 computers compared to Final Cut Pro. I'm sure the M3 anything is better than the M1. I'm on the M1 Max. I'm sure the M3 is, you know, 10, 20, 30% better. Yeah, it does everything that I need it, but I'm not doing, you know, 50 tracks, 48 tracks of audio at this point. I'm just doing up to, I'd say, 16 tracks of band recordings. Not that many plugins. If you I use a few plugins, I have Waves Bundle, but I use the uh, United Audio stuff now for the most part. It, it's it works fine. I do I do some other things. Superior Drummer, I use some of that to in, to enhance my drums sometimes. Substitute if I have a different kick drum I want to put in, I'll convert the audio to MIDI and then take the MIDI and attach it to a professionally recorded studio kick drum, for example and it matches up like next to perfect. Amazing, amazing things. So what's gonna be the big thing at NAB? Of course, it's gonna be AI. AI everywhere, AI everywhere. They talked about AI last year. Where's the AI in all the products? It's not anywhere. They said they, they sprinkled it on, Sam Messman said they sprinkled it on like a spice. The AI sprinkling of stuff in the computer, but it wasn't, didn't show up. They were talking about it last year. It didn't show up. A couple things have it, but nothing like you would expect from all the, you know, the people are, the companies are there to advertise their products, to promote their products. Of course they are. Of course they are. That's what they're there for. Even if something isn't coming out. Have you done any Pixelmator tutorials? No, I'm a student of Pixelmator. I'm not a teacher of Pixelmator for sure. So, I'm excited for NAB. I mean, there's a lot of things besides Final Cut, but there's a lot of things for Final Cut. There's a lot of tutorials. I mean, there's a lot of uh, events, like I said, to go to our Facebook page, FCP and NAB, FCP NAB, facebook.com slash groups, FCP NAB. Just a comment about user interface compared to others. I have a good time when I go to NAB. There you go. Ben said he'd get that AI plugin. Of course, I'll, listen, I'll be stopping by Premiere. I'm not going to interview anybody. I doubt it. Although Patrick Southern might be there. And Michael, no, Michael left. Michael Cioni left from underneath Adobe. He quit. So he's not there anymore. He was with Frame.io. Patrick Southern is still there as far as I know. Friend of ours. But I'll be stopping by. I have a friend who works for Avid. I'll be stopping by there just to see what's going on, not to interview necessarily. 
and anything Final Cut Pro related, I'll be stopping at. There's a lot of free events. There's a lot of free events every night. So I'll be on the show floor during the day. I might get back and I will be, my, my intention is to live stream two or three different times while I'm at the convention center. Short five or 10 minute opening up the window. I'm opening up a window into NAB so people that can't go can experience what it's like. Now, I'll be doing more sophisticated live streams like these in the morning before I head to NAB. I might do one at night, but the one in the morning is after I'm ready after I've got up, after I've had coffee, get ready for the day before I head out. That'll be the big one of each day, showing clips from the day before. Why does it keep saying that? It says the live stream has ended. Has it ended? I hope not. No, it has not ended. It keeps saying it's ended, but it's not ended. At least Facebook keeps saying that. Let me just make sure Let me see if that's coming out properly. I think it is. Sorry. Anyway, I sold my 2019 MacBook Pro. I just saw that I was muted. I sold my 2019 MacBook Pro, kept that money to buy a new MacBook Pro. I was looking at the M3. I did not get the M3. It was $5,000, over 5000 bucks. I said, no, I'll wait for the M4 at this point, maybe the M5. I'll keep using my, I'll keep using my M1 2021 M1 Max, MacBook Pro 16 inch. I'll keep using that. And, but I might, I'm very tempted to get an iPad Pro when they come out this year. That's going to be less than, that's going to be 2000 or less. So less than maybe 40% of what the MacBook Pro costs. So we'll see. And if I get that, I'm not going to be renting Final Cut for the iPad. Not interested. Why would I get Final Cut for the iPad when I have Final Cut on my MacBook Pro? This is superior to the iPad version. Maybe I'll try out the, I mean, I'm already, I already know how to edit in Final Cut Pro. I have to relearn how to edit on the iPad version? No. I like the MacBook Pro version. Now, LumaFusion, I will be using on the new iPad Pro when I get it, for sure. That'll be fun. I recently decided to try Premiere in order to download the software. You have to require to grant access to content on computers. There's a major outrageous turn off. I did not use it. Final Cut needs disk, ac disk access permissions also. Yes, it does. But I, listen, I, you can always turn that stuff off if you, if you don't like it. No, I, I'm not a big fan of Adobe because of their ransom for the rest of your life model. It's not that they're subscription. It's this, the ransom for the rest of your life.
when you're 90 years old and you want to edit with Premiere, if you don't pay every month, you can't edit. They turn your application off. They turn your application off so it can't be used if you stop paying. It's a ransom for the rest of your life. If you're a youngster or you're working for a company and they pay for it, that's fine. I would not support their model in any circumstances. Zero would I support their ransom, paying ransom for the rest of your life. Let's check out the backyard. Things are turning green. Bird feeder is not very active. Why is that? Oh, there was a bird with this flew down. This went beyond needing to download software to the applications folder. Motion VFX is going at ransom route two for the upper end suite of plugins. I won't, won't support them. I won't support them. I, I, from Filmic Pro sold out to Bending Spoons, which was a huge mistake. They ended up firing the entire crew and they had to reduce the price and everything. I'm not interested. Here's, I don't mind supporting third party developers like Philip and Greg Lumberjack Systems. That's a different story. That's a different story. Here's, what, what is the software that I use that is, well, let me tell you one. Ecamm, what I'm using right here. Ecamm Live. It's a subscription, but I got a big, big discount because I had bought the original Ecamm Live application big discount on a yearly subscription. This is one that I can use, for example. Really, that's what happened to Filmic Pro? Yeah. Filmic Pro was bought out by Bending Spoons. They in immediately raised the price to $49.99 per year. If you didn't pay the $49.99 per year, you couldn't use the app. And they fired the entire Filmic Pro crew this, this last year. They fired the entire bunch of them, all the original innovators. So I dislike Bending Spoons immensely. Immensely. And I don't like Adobe the same reason. You could be working for 20 years with Adobe Premiere, and now you're retiring, and you want to edit some family videos or doing maybe a few short spots. Keep paying the rest of your life, sucker. Keep paying that ransom for the rest of your life. You can never not pay Adobe if you want to use your software. Every month, every year, for the rest of your life. That's ransom. And I've heard horror stories of people who can't try to get out of their contract and there's all kinds of issues and problems and things. So, that's another issue. Just not interested. Final Cut Pro may need to be better at using the CPU and GPU, part of the M-Series. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, Bending Spoons, not on our friends list. Absolutely. They just buy up software companies and just start charging it. Ridiculous. I mean, you used to, you used to get be able to buy Filmic Pro for 18 bucks, perpetual license. Bending Spoons comes in, buys them, $49.99 per year. Per year. I, they came out with a special last August, so you can, you can get it for $19.99 per year. Uh, I got that, so I got it till next August. Immediately after that, Black Magic came out with their app with their camera app. These are camera apps we're talking about. 
So I won't be renewing, that's for sure. I will not be renewing, that is for sure. So don't forget, I'm going to NAB. Listeners, if you want to tune in, please feel welcome. I'll be presenting a live virtual window into NAB right from the get-go, from the airport when I arrive at NAB, five to ten times, five to ten minutes per window, probably ten minutes, and let you see what it's actually like live as it's happening. I'll also be showing, I'll be filming the entire time and present some of those. Have bigger, I will have bigger in the morning once I get up and have coffee and st stuff. But you can help. You can buy me a coffee.com slash Richard Taylor. Buy me a coffee while I'm at NAB. No big deal. Buy me a coffee while I'm at NAB. So that was interesting. So my internet is was going just stalled a little bit and then Final Cut Pro, I mean um Facebook Live said waiting for the live stream. Well it's back again. It is back again. So it's interesting. I'm getting the people watching on YouTube, but I'm not getting the report of people watching from Facebook. I'm only getting the YouTube watchers. It's interesting. The count, I mean. We've got up to 100, 101 live simultaneous viewers two weeks in a row and we're still getting really good numbers on the live viewers on these so any other comments about Final Cut Pro I'm going to do a little bit of yard work now that our weather has somewhat stabilized system output Kim Lai Let me turn that off. So, I'm looking forward to it. Two weeks from today, I'll be headed to Las Vegas. I don't know how many years I'm going to be going to NAB, but this year I'm looking forward to it. Remember what made bending spoons popular? Yuri Geller, I absolutely do. Anyone old enough to remember that from? <laughs> He's on Twitter. He's on he's on uh, Yuri Geller. I follow him on X, the platform. I'm, I don't know. what no idea what he does, but. Final Cut Pro on the watch. That'll be fun. Yay, they should charge $50 a month for that, too. So Final Cut on the iPad is only four, $4, $5 a month, $50 for a year. I don't have any desire. If I get the iPad Pro, which I probably, listen, if I get the iPad Pro, it'll satiate my desire to buy new Mac hardware for a year or so. So I won't be buying the M3 MacBook Pro unless I see a really, really good sale on one. I'll wait for the M4 because my M1 Max is doing fantastic. Logic, Final Cut Pro, these live streaming things. I'm running, I have a dual boot system running Sonoma and Ventura both. Hello, Richard. I'm late, but will the Final Cut Pro team deliver 10.7.2? Yes, they will deliver Final Cut Pro 10.7.2. The question you want to ask is when? When they will be delivering it? Exactly. No one knows until they do. Well, they know. Final Cut Pro team knows when they're going to. Like I said, I'm not confident that we're going to see 10.7.2 between now and NAB. The possibility exists. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. 18 thumbs up. The possibility exists that they will release 10.7.2 before NAB with new features. They've done it before. They've done it before. Still no round tripping with motion. Why can't they do that? Wasn't that possible in the past? It was with 10.7. 10.7, you can have a 
motion project in the Final Cut Pro timeline. A motion project as a clip. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. It is appreciated. Got 19 thumbs up. We get a lot of thumbs up on these live streams, which is really, really cool. So in, in Final Cut Pro Classic, you could take a motion project and put it in a Final Cut Pro timeline. And it played back just like a clip. And if you wanted to modify it, you double clicked it, it would open up in motion, you did your modification, saved it, and it would be saved in the Final Cut Pro timeline. Fantastic. Not only that, you could drag a one project from the browser down to another timeline, another project in the time. You can drive one timeline into the other in Final Cut Pro Classic. Very, very cool features. Just had my iMac Pro opened up, dust blown out, and it runs like a dream. Maybe the M5 will be enough to get me to upgrade. The iMac Pros were fantastic, Ben. They were great, great machines. Final Cut Pro 7, you could open motion projects with QuickTime. I didn't, I didn't know that, and play like a regular video, too. I did not know that. Well, there's a reason why we can't do that now. I'm sure the Final Cut Pro team would be more than welcome. I'd be, they'd be more than... We'd welcome them to tell us what, what's going on with that. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here for today. We've been on for an hour and 40 minutes. Lots of thumbs up. Thank you very much, everybody. Tune in next week for Final Cut TV and Coffee. Don't forget about our sponsors who are sponsoring us to go to NAB. Hedge, Future Media Conferences, Lumatouch, and Cormelt. And if you, late great Brute Snazarian showed me that trick. Very, very cool. I did not know that. If you want to buy me a coffee, sponsor me while I'm at NAB, you can do that over here, buymeacoffee.com slash Richard Taylor. We have, we have, you know, people buying coffees all the time over there. But during, during NAB is especially, is especially cool. Let me pull that up real quick. During NAB is especially cool. So here we are, Richard Taylor over there, buy me a coffee. Not Richard Taylor TV, just Richard Taylor. Buy me a coffee, lightly toasted bagel, hamburger, fries, support Final Cut Pro Radio TV. Next up, Final Cut Pro at NAB, reporting live. There's my links to my social media. Everything's at Richard Taylor TV. And here we go. Sean Beckner bought a coffee. Joe Wilson bought 10 coffees. Thank you very much. Matthew Pate bought four. Someone bought three coffees. You don't even have to leave your name. Spencer Lewis, Kevin F., Eric Emmerich. Someone bought four coffees. Jason Mark Williams bought a coffee. This is where you can support. Buy me some coffees and hamburgers, french fries. I'll use it for all kinds of good stuff. Have a good weekend, Richard. Same, same to you, Ben. Thanks for tuning in. As usual, our friend Yari says, do you use Space Designer in Final Cut Pro? My presets don't work anymore. I don't use that, Yari, to be honest with you. I haven't used that hardly at all over the years. I know it's a good one. Good day from New Jersey. Absolutely, absolutely. If I want a Mac that is considerably faster than my 16 M1 Pro for Hanukkah Pro, I need to pay nearly twice as much for that. I, I know, mine was over five, mine was over $5,000. Here's our friend Ben, says, you already get with me later, space designer working fine for me. There you go. That's the thing about tuning in here. You get some tips and tricks from people. Problem solved. Ben will solve your problem, Yari. You Anyway, I'm going to get out of here for today. One more in studio. I might do a 9 o'clock. Maybe I'll do that. I'll do a 9 o'clock Final Cut TV and coffee on the day that I'm going to 
the airport for NAB. I'm excited. You people are great. Absolutely great. I'll turn that on. Let's do that again. You're the best. You are all the best. Thanks for tuning in. And I will talk to you all. If Final Cut Pro comes out on Tuesday or Thursday, if there's an update, we'll be back live streaming within an hour or so to talk about it. But I think, I hope we get Final Cut Pro 10.7.2 as a feature update before NAB. Possibility exists. All right, everyone. Talk to you all later. Next week, if not before.